Good morning. Welcome once again to St Peter's Church in Newton in Mumbles Ministry area. We began as always with an organ voluntary that was Christ is Our Cornerstone by S.S. Wesley. We meet as a family in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you and keep you in the love of Christ. We open our hearts and minds to God as we say together. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit that we may love and worship you faithfully through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pause and call to mind our sins. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way, to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Sunday after Trinity. This is today's prayer. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in keep it, the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading comes from the 
letter of Paul to the Christians in Rome. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us. In the while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel today, we have Jesus who's been with the disciples, he's been with them, he's been teaching them, and he's been preparing them. He finally sends them out. He actually gets them to drive the car, if you like the idea of the analogy, and they go out and they start to preach and proclaim the kingdom. Sometimes people ask, why is it that Jesus says, go nowhere among the Gentiles? Surely he did encourage the Gentiles to come to him. Yes, indeed. But I think it's quite important to remember that in the course of what we think and in the course of the ministry of Jesus, we are aware that he is fulfilling the promises that have been made by God. He is not abolishing what's gone before, he is fulfilling it. And those promises had originally been made to the chosen people, to the race that God had led out of slavery in Egypt. Jesus sends the, the apostles or the disciples first to them. God always keeps his promises. Sadly, the, the promises are not always taken up by those who hear it in the way that God would have wished them to, but the promise was made and the, the good news is preached first to them, and then after that 
it is taken out further and is taken to all people everywhere. And the good news is preached to everyone. We remember the words at the end of uh, this Gospel, of Matthew's Gospel, go out and, and baptise everyone in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. It begins first with the chosen people and then goes on. But it's very important to remember what the message is. It is good news. And the good news, the word we can translate as gospel, is the kingdom of heaven has come near. The Greek word almost means it, it, it's just arriving, it's knocking on the door. And the message that Jesus is saying first to the, the chosen race and then to everyone is don't wait for it. It's not about pie in the sky when you die. It's not, this, it's not about trying to slip away out of this world somehow so you can go to heaven. This is a message about now. It's happening now. The kingdom, the rule of God. And, God is, and Jesus is showing what the rule of his Father is. A just and gentle rule that brings forgiveness, that brings healing, that brings justice, that brings equality, that includes people. That is the message, as Jesus says, that when they look, that, that the harvest is plentiful. People then and people now desperately want to hear a message in this world of equality, of justice, of truth, of love, of forgiveness. A new radical way that puts aside the ways that we have tried in so many different generations of selfishness, of greed, of avarice, all those things which cause so much problem and difficulty. The kingdom of heaven has come near. The message is there. Make it part of your life. Don't wait for something to happen in heaven for things to be put right. Now is the time when God is acting in his world, in our time. He has entered our time and he said, right, we work together. I will show you how to do it. I will prove the truth of what I'm saying. And I will give you the strength through the Holy Spirit to follow what the Father and I want you to do in changing your lives and in changing the world, in sharing the good news that there is a God, that this is his world, that he has shared life and death with us and overcome them, and that he wants us here and now to become part of that movement called the kingdom, whereby men and women allow the spirit into their lives to change them and to transform them, and through them to transform their relationships, transform the world, and make the kingdom of God come on earth. Yes, indeed, Jesus is vindicated on the cross and one day we will see him come again and the kingdom of God will come in its fullness on earth. But we are called here and now not to wait for something to happen. It has happened. The king has come. He's shown us the way and he calls us in our lives to follow him. To build the kingdom now. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is our manifesto. That is our calling. That's our responsibility. That is our privilege. That is our joy. We follow in the footsteps of the king. He comes and he lives in us through his spirit and in bread and wine. He comes to us to transform us and to bring his kingdom on earth. We're now going to pray about these things. We're going to go across to the Lady Chapel and if you follow me, These are the prayers that you have on the order of service. There is always an order of service which accompanies uh, the, the video that we upload. Um, these 
prayers were written by Canon Keith, our ministry area leader, because we join together as a ministry area on Sundays in this strange time, virtually here in St Peter's uh, and in different ways the three parishes come together. The flowers that you can see at the feet of Our Lady there are uh, from the family of Clover Chug, who was a, a loyal member of the church here, uh, who sadly has passed away. Um, as we say the prayers, I will light a candle with each of the intercessions. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare and mission of the Church, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For John, our Bishop and Archbishop, for our linked churches of St John the Evangelist and St Thomas Swansea, for the Mumbles Ministry area, for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, for all in authority and for all who bear the responsibility of responding to the coronavirus pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For this community of Mumbles, for every city, town and village, and for all the people who live within them, for those shielding or living through social isolation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick and suffering, for those who have contracted coronavirus or who care for them, for their safety, health and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Remembering all who have gone before us in faith and in communion with all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus said, this is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We have our hymn now, Ye that know the Lord is gracious.
and the grace of God. We take this bread, we take this wine to follow Christ's example and obey his command. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. He is your eternal Word. Through him you created the universe and formed us in your own image. You sent him to be our Saviour, born of Mary through the power of the Spirit. Upon the cross he opened wide his arms of mercy, embracing us in perfect love, destroying the power of evil, suffering and death. On the first day of the week you raised him from the dead and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Through him you have given us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us your own sons and daughters. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we praise your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise. And grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us, his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. We join together in the prayer which Jesus himself taught us, reminding ourselves, of course, that in it we pray for God's kingdom to come and for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Come, let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, we pray that we may know the presence of your Son. Even though we are not able at this time to receive our communion, May we know indeed that we are in communion with him, with each other, and with you, through the operation of your Holy Spirit. May it strengthen us, guide us, guard us, and keep us, enabling us to do your work, and empowering us to bring your kingdom on earth, and your will on earth. Amen. We continue now with our communion anthem, Thanks Be to God. for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son in this holy sacrament, through which we are assured of the hope of eternal life. We offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Keep us in the fellowship of his body, the Church, and send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each one of you, your homes, and the people that you love, today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. We are going to conclude our service this morning, not with an organ voluntary, but with a hymn. The hymn, All People That On Earth Do Dwell, arranged by Vaughan Williams. It was used at the Queen's coronation, and of course, Saturday was the Queen's official birthday. We're delighted that for this, our virtual choristers are joined on the trumpet by Andy George. <laughs> Thank you. 